thanks for coming to my birthday party. I really appreciate this. Oh, dear. So, the future of faith-based giving. Right now, 40% of the donated money in this country goes to religious organizations annually. And in the next 20 years, much of that money is going to go to some other charity, or it's leaving our sector entirely. To understand the future of faith-based giving, we first need to understand what it is. And in order to understand what faith-based giving is, we probably need to spend a bit of time understanding what it is not. Faith-based giving is not philanthropy, at least not completely. They may look alike, and the end result may be the same thing, but they are a little different from one another. Philanthropy is defined as having an altruistic concern for human welfare. That's a good thing, and faith-based giving aligns beautifully with that. But faith-based giving taps into something else. It is connected to one's belief and understanding of a higher power and the outward expression of that belief. Faith-based giving is not done only for the sake of giving back to one's community or helping those who are less fortunate. People whose giving is influenced by faith often see resources as a sacred trust rather than a matter of ownership. That is to say, what I have is not mine, but it belongs to a higher power. And so the question is not how much do I give, but rather how much of this do I keep for myself? Faith-based giving is altruistic, but it's also a matter of obedience and worship. That's not quite the same thing as philanthropy. That's not to say one is better than the other, it's just that they are a little different. As a kid, I grew up in a home where giving and church attendance were inextricably linked. We were taught that giving was the first thing that you did with money, not the last thing. Every week, we went to church, and our family made a gift at the church, and each of us as kids made a gift. We called that an offering. Those donations helped to keep the church lights on and the pastor paid, but a lot of the money that was collected went overseas and nationally to all kinds of development and relief agencies and organizations. I attribute much of my attitudes and my habits around giving to the lessons of giving I learned when I was just a kid. Furthermore, this habit was reinforced by teachings that highlighted the importance of giving and it was modeled to me by other people. I grew up in a culture where giving was completely normal. I'm not alone. While the average annual gift in Canada in 2010 was $446, according to Statistics Canada, that amount more than doubles among people who are religiously active to just over 1,000. Anecdotally, we see this kind of generosity at Abundance Canada as well. Most of our clients would align themselves with one flavor or another of Christian faith. And many of these clients cannot use all of their donations in a given year. A few have capped their estates, and at the end of the year they look at their net worth, and any money they have over and above that amount is simply given to charity. We have clients who forego homes, second homes, cars, trips, and all manner of luxury items simply because it would get in the way of their regular giving habits. Now, this might sound like another way of talking about values that are driven and that drive one's generosity. But the common thread is that people of faith are moved by forces that cannot be fully explained by altruism alone. If people of faith only gave to faith-based charities, this would largely be white noise. We wouldn't have to worry about it in the wider sector. But people of faith give well beyond faith-based charities. There is a direct correlation between those who are most active in their faith and the amount they give to the so-called secular charities in addition to religious charities. We see this play out at Abundance Canada time and time again with our clients. People of faith tend to give more than others, and they tend to give to charities beyond the religious community. This is good news for everybody in this room and our entire sector. 
But there is a problem, and it's big. The group that makes up generous, faith-based people is shrinking in this country. Each year, fewer people are attending religious church services and other services, and all signs would suggest that that's only going to continue in the future. In 1985, the number of people who said they never attended a worship service was one in five. 20 years later, that number had increased to one in three. Now, many people are not fussed by this. They're quite happy to see places of religion close their doors. But as a recovering minister myself, I say not so fast. Because as places of religion close their doors, we also lose a huge part of the culture that promotes, teaches, and models generosity. All major religions include generosity as part of their faith expression and teaching. Those lessons start when people are young, they are taught regularly, and everybody is included. The lessons of giving are reinforced through modeling, which creates a community of like-minded, generous people. These people give more as a percentage of both their income and their assets than most other people in Canada, and they support more than religious charities. So, as places of worship shrink or disappear, who or what is going to fill the gap that is left behind? Who will take up the torch that instills and normalizes a culture of generosity? As people fall away from organized religion and the culture of generosity and giving that it creates, will those same people continue to be generous, or will their giving habits fade like their worship attendance? Because unless we as a sector find a way to keep those people fully engaged, we are certainly going to miss them when they are gone. Thank you very much.